Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us today. We're here at South by Southwest with Brand Innovators and Channel Factory. My name is Lauren Douglas and I'm the SVP of Marketing at Channel Factory and I'm joined by Christy McGuire who is the GM and Global v VP of Media at TripAdvisor. Thanks for coming. Thanks we're for in, having we're me. We're at South by Southwest. <laughs> it's crazy that we're here. It's been four years since I've been here, since my uh, transition out of Condé and into TripAdvisor, but it's great to be here. It's just a little chillier yeah. than what I remember. It's freezing, but that's all right. Um, anything that you've seen that's cool or you're excited by? You know, there's so many different panels that I'm excited by yeah. and it's, it's the thing about South by like, there's so much you want to do and mm -hmm. see, but you don't want to commit to anything because yeah, totally. there's things that pop up every totally. two seconds that yeah. you want to be a part of. Uh, so I'm really just hoping to bump into people that I haven't yeah. seen in two years, have conversations and ultimately really, uh, get back to, to normality. Yeah. I hear you. I actually, um, wanted to like do a little walking tour and see stuff, but I'm like, it's so cold. So I don't know. About That's that. for tomorrow or Monday <laughs> yeah, exactly. where it's supposed to get nicer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> cool. Um, well, talk to me a little bit about, so you've been at TripAdvisor for about a year now, right? Three years, Three actually. years. Oh, wow, I didn't realize. It feels like a year in a weird way. Yeah, um, pandemic I, adjusted times. Right, exactly. Yeah. I was at TripAdvisor for about nine months before the pandemic okay. actually hit. Okay, cool. And then the world changed yes. for everyone, but really changed for travel. Tell um, me about what that was like as a travel company. Yeah, I mean, in a day, yeah. we were down over 90% of revenue, oh which God. is something like your business model can never sustain. So no. it was immediate, immediate triage mode. Obviously, everybody was sort of you know, personally affected and trying mm -hmm. to figure that out with, with my large team. Um, but we ultimately had to look at what the business was going to be in two, three years and yeah. how we could weather the storm. So totally. we ended up cutting 50% of my team. So my team was about 275 mm. um, globally, which was a challenge to do in two weeks. And yeah. then across the company, they had to, you know, I think it was upwards of a thousand. So wow. um, a lot of change. I really went in to build a business, diversify revenue streams to, you know, bring in new clients. And that was all going well. Uh, yeah. And then that changed dramatically yeah. because it was a, about a very different mission and weathering the storm. Absolutely. Um, and so how did the weathering go and how are you, how have you weathered? <laughs> yeah. You know, I think, um, you know, at the start of, of the, the pandemic, it was all about like, how do we think about the people? How do we do right by the people that are exiting? And then the people that were staying while they still had their job, they were taking on two to three X the work. So, wow. you know, while the business wasn't there, the clients were still there. The yep. travel industry was in desperate need of, mm -hmm. you know, TripAdvisor's insights because mm -hmm. we see things in real time changing and yeah. can ultimately help our partners. Um, and then there was a lot of just core fundamental work that yep. we had to change. So 2020 was really all about the people and making sure that we were servicing our clients. And 2021 was about coming back out and making sure that clients were taking advantage of a volatile but real recovery that yep. started to happen. And then, you know, the variant and, uh, with Delta and Omicron sort of set that back and now the Ukraine issues. But I think w w we're resilient in a way that we weren't before, yeah. where whatever sort of comes at us with you know, really turbulent times and geopolitical issues. We're sort of ready and, and armed for. And I feel like people are traveling and they want to travel. Look at the fact that we're all here and we're like, oh, we're Everybody's traveling. Everybody's so excited. Yeah, so it's like it's, it, that that must feel good for you at this point. Yeah, I mean, I traveled a lot for business and I love traveling personally. Yeah. I like, you know, sort of have the next three, four months sort of planned out personally and professionally. And you leave one trip and you're excited for the next one. So yes. there's something that travel brings to you as a, as a human, like Absolutely. connecting with people, new experiences, new food that, you know, I just feel like everybody's sort of been at a loss for yeah. while you've traveled domestically, while you've taken road trips and done beach vacations and things that were a bit more safe. People are ready to, you know, travel internationally again, get totally. back out there totally. and put everything behind them while it's still very much so mm -hmm. here and, and, you know, uh, COVID is, is still around, I, I think everybody's sort of ready to move on in yeah. safe ways. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, okay, so talk to me, let's pivot away from COVID for a minute and just talk a little bit about like, what's your remit? What are you looking to do? How do you want to grow your business? And how are you, we talked a little bit about like endemic versus non-endemic. I'd love for you to dive in a little bit on that. Yeah, so TripAdvisor was always a must have for the travel category. Yeah. So you think about, you know, spirit our spirits so you think about airlines um hotels mm -hmm. destinations mm -hmm. uh, attractions like TripAdvisor is a place that you know consumers are coming mm -hmm. to find inspiration to validate the decision that they're making to book a trip yep uh, but we really weren't 
creating a, a market for you know non endemic categories yeah. like FinServe where you're booking those big two three thousand dollars trips <laughs> in your credit card. Yeah. Outbev where you know you would want to try new drinks and go yeah. to food and restaurants, culinary experiences. Totally. Um, and then things like auto where you know especially during the pandemic with the great outdoors. So we were able to really crack the code with that through COVID despite us still being a travel destination. It yeah. was a place that we were able to find niches and then scale those. So mm-hmm. things like CPG we did a large partnership with Lysol on Travel Safe and, okay. and thinking about ways that they can get that out to cool. you know, the many businesses that we uh, have on our platform. Yeah, uh, We've done a myriad of partnerships with auto, like Tesla, even though they don't have a mar- marketing budget, it's easy to figure out ways to pull in our destinations like um, Australia and North South Wales okay. to create opportunities for them. Um, and th- then, you know, uh, FinServe, what you realize through the pandemic is cross borders and international, while it's not the, the totality of their travel business, it's a large part of their profit. Totally. So that being gone was a huge opportunity for us to rethink the way that they, you know, came out in 2022 to, to tap into that. Cool. Are you working with some of the companies that are, um, I assume you're working with tra- traditional fence serve companies, but there's, I know there's a whole crop of new companies like Affirm and other where, where people are actually paying for things sort yep. of in installments yep. again, which is kind of interesting. So I imagine trips, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to take this trip. I'm going to pay for it in this certain way. And so you're sort of providing that to people. Yeah. We're, it's a lot about education yeah. right now with things like that. And, you know, they'll do test campaigns to really mm-hmm. see how that resonates with our audience. But, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's educational aspects, there's booking aspects and, and, you know, cars like electric vehicles. It's all about education mm-hmm. with, you know, book now, pay later, all about education. It's like, totally. how can you do it? How can yeah. I integrate to our platform? Cool. PayPal is one that we actually have fully integrated to, to TripAdvisor. Cool. And I assume like a lot of brands love working with you because your content is, it's authentic. It makes people happy. It's positive. You're not talking about like the worst parts of the world. You're talking about happy things, right? right. And like travel and um, you know, I, I imagine it's also brand safe, right? right? And so there's probably a lot of brands that love working with you because and are happy um, to to be able to to go back into the travel realm because it's such a, a yeah. great property. Yeah. What's interesting about TripAdvisor is it's obviously user generated. Yeah. So it's people powered mm-hmm. with people like you that have been there before that mm-hmm. can ultimately relate. Uh, the company was actually built 22 years ago on the fact that there wasn't any real authentic reviews cool. and you were looking at bro- glossy brochures, which ultimately didn't translate to the right. experience that you went to. Right. So we have a, a crazy content moderation process in place okay. to make sure that there's no fake reviews and anything that might be paid reviews are taken off the platform. Oh, wow. We just published a 30 page transparency report to okay. you know the public and, and our businesses and our yeah. consumers to make sure that they understood sort of the, the you know steps that we were taking mm-hmm. and the ways that we were enriching that. So for us, it's all predicated on trust. It's all yeah. predicated on brand safety. And yeah. then it's all on authentic, real reviews, which is typically really good, but you'd be surprised. There's a lot of bad in there as well and a lot <laughs> informative, whether it be safety related yeah. or something else. That totally. People want to know. Yeah. They want to know the good and the bad to Absolutely. make sure that the decision is right for them when they're traveling. Totally. I actually have to go to a conference in like two weeks and um, I was looking at TripAdvisor to see what the conference organizers were recommending. And my husband was like, this is a like you know, six out of 10 on TripAdvisor. You can't stay there. I was like, oh my God, thank God you looked at that. <laughs> and it matters. Like it, it really, really does, does translate. Yeah. I mean, what's interesting too is people would have thought that the bubble ratings and the reviews would have gone down yeah. through COVID because people were short staffed, like, you know, getting servers back and things like that were volatile, yeah. but it actually went up in oh, really? 2020 and 2021. It wow. went up. Um, like a quarter of a star, which just shows that people were thankful to get out there, appreciative of the hospitality and travel workers totally. that were back yeah. um, and having good experiences despite the obstacles that, you know, the travel industry is sort of ripe with right now. Yeah. And do you, I mean, I know you said you had to unfortunately lay off about 50% of the staff. Do you mm-hmm. see, is it like rebuilding the team and regrowing sort of on your, at the forefront of your mind at this point? Yeah. It's So we're definitely, we have a ton of investment this year, which is great, but the investment is only as good as the people that you can hire totally. into it. Absolutely. And the market is insane. It's yes. hard to keep great people. It's hard yeah. to acquire great people. Mm-hmm. So that's been the challenge is really getting people back into the travel industry, like great salespeople, great mm-hmm. marketers. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So we're really doing our best to sort of promote it like every other company. Yeah. I mean, even the big platforms are having a challenging time hiring yeah. great talent. Absolutely. So that's that's one of the, the major things that sort of keeps me up at night as we yeah. think about rebounding. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, what makes you excited for the next year or two? So there's a lot of investment in things that we've never done before. Okay. So, you know, you go to TripAdvisor, it's great. People like you, you're looking at reviews, you can believe those are reviews, but a lot of people also want curated editorial content. Totally. With, you know, influencers that are on our platform. We have a, a massive franchise called Traveler's Choice where mm -hmm. it's the best of the best restaurants and hotels and destinations mm. and having influencers go out there and experience those and, mm -hmm. and you know, put it in, into the snackable, you know, TikTok format, Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So we're, we have a whole content strategy and my mm -hmm. long-term view of that is in, you know, three to five years, that's 25% of our traffic. We have oh, wow. a massive user base and there's a lot of opportunity to yeah. both continue to double down on our, you know, people powered UGC, but mm -hmm. also complement that. Um, and then we're investing in, you know, we're creating a content studio called Wander Lab and it'll be launching in the next month or two. So cool. there's just so much great work that's coming out of my team that, that's awesome. you know, I have brilliance on my team. It's just like, how do I make sure I keep them and keep them, you know, uh, thriving and happy yeah. uh, to deliver against all yeah. the big work that's ahead of us. All right. So you have a huge team and um, obviously you're talking about like leadership and keeping your team happy. How do you think about, um, you know, first of all, how do you deal with such a big team? Like, how yeah. do you make sure that you, uh, you know, that as you sort of grow, you probably have to let more things go and you have to trust into your team more. And like, how do you sort of like, you know, think about like managing such a large organization? Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually become second nature for me, but it wasn't five years ago when okay. I had like a large team of Condé Nast mm -hmm. across 22 titles and a lot of different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. But it all comes down to trust and empowering yeah. and like to me the 80 20 rule like do i believe that it could be perfect probably but does it need to be absolutely not okay. so it's really about making people you know uh fully empowered and have mm -hmm. the space to fail yeah but no i'm always there to sort of back them up yeah um you know i i, I definitely lean heavily into my women leaders as well it's, yeah. it's interesting what i i found through the annual review process that we just finished um I found myself across all of the leaders on my direct team saying, uh, as an opportunity, know how good you are because they don't. Like, wow. they, it's it's unbelievable how um, you know it's just a difference from the women versus the men. But they, they just they don't believe in themselves. Totally. The it's same like the way. imposter syndrome thing. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I the, I still you know deep down there's always an element of like. Can I do this? Do I believe in myself? And I've always been a very young senior leader. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, men in the room plus sort of uh, being the younger woman in the room yeah. is always an interesting dynamic. So I take that and try to pay it forward as yeah. much as possible cool. because they are truly brilliant mm -hmm. and they just don't know it. Right, right. And so how do you get them to sort of like recognize that and say like, own it, you know, yeah. like how do you sort of pull that out of people? I've started to call them out in little moments okay. where they're second guessing themselves. Okay. Like there was this one lady on my team who's amazing and she's hiring somebody in and she's just like, well, I don't know because she's as senior as me. And I'm like, you are great. You're hiring her. She's going to work for you. She's interviewing because she wants to work for you. Have the confidence and show up. Totally. And she'll know that too. Mm -hmm. So, she, I, you know, in those moments, I just make sure I'm continuing to reinforce it because yeah. I don't think it's just like one time yeah. making sure they have it's the feedback. Ongoing. It's yeah. like they don't see sometimes mm -hmm. what they're doing in real time. Mm -hmm. And like sometimes when somebody told me once, like, if you hire a bag of really good talent, you're the one holding the bag at the end. So like, don't be afraid to hire people that are brilliant. A hundred percent. Yeah. I also, listen, I have people, somebody great that just gave notice and I'm so like bummed and mm -hmm. gutted about it, but I believe it's the right next move for her and yeah. I'm supporting her in mm -hmm. all the ways I can because you know, she's, she's going to go off and she's going to do great things and yeah. we'll be forever connected. So yeah. there's, there, to me, it's just like, how do you continue to breed positivity yeah, um, absolutely. and confidence yeah. in, in the team at large, but then obviously the women leaders specifically. Totally. I love it. Um, I'm actually about to go do a women's panel right now. Oh. <laughs> and the first question I'm going to ask is, do we still need to do women's panels or is it just marketing panels, right? right? So I think there's an interesting thing with like, I think so, because I do think that there is a lot of 
you know, think the reality is this still it's still a man's world. Yep. It's still the way that it is on the ground. There's still women are still having we still have that imposter syndrome. There's still all of these things, but yeah. at the same time you're like, well, I also want to be just a good at my job. Do right. I have to be good because I'm a woman in business or am I just good at business? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I feel so there's like that I have like, to overdo it because I'm a woman. Yeah. The last 2 years has also made it a little bit uh more difficult with, with the progress that was made. So I, I do think that those panels and those things to continue to create spaces and make sure that women are, you know, boosting each other up is, is so important. I think so too. I think, I don't think it's passe yet, but no. I still think it's worth Hopefully asking it the question. Be. Someday, <laughs> 10 years. Um, one piece of leadership advice you've gotten that you would pass along to somebody else. Um, you know, my a former boss of mine at Condé Nast, I used to see all of the different things coming at him and stress. And I was like, how do you deal with it? He's like, I take one problem, pick it up, solve it, move on. Take one problem, pick it up and solve it. He's like, I don't let any of it sort of simmer and, and really get to me because at the end of the day, they're decisions. You're making a decision, which is better than no decision. Absolutely. I love that. Okay, cool. Do you take that into your own life too? I do. Cool. I try. <laughs> Personal is a little different than business, but... <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Thanks I really appreciate your time. Me.